All right, guys, David Dodge, Mike Slane here. Discount Property Investors talking to you guys about cold calling. Dave, Ooh. they're asking about cold calling. How do you do it? Some tips on it. What do you want to cover? Let's talk about a few things with them. Cold calling, sure. I think, one of the things to keep in mind is your end goal. So that means what are your ambitions or what are your goals for real estate, for, for wholesaling, for making money? Because quite frankly, you're going to face a lot of rejection. So if you have that end goal in mind, it's going to help you uh, get through a lot of those no's. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have the end goal in mind. Know what you're looking for, too. So, you know, typically we're cold calling to buy real estate. That's what we do and it's why we cold call. So what real estate are we looking to buy? Well, we're going to define the area of town that we're looking to invest in. And then we're going to go try to find people that have houses that are for sale by owner or we're gonna find lists of people that own properties within that defined area. One of the places that we get our lists from, or the main place is PropStream. Um, and then there's a lot of different uh, places where you can then take that information uh, that you get. So one of the, you know, one of my favorite lists, I'd say top three would be vacants, absentee owns, and high equities. Mm -hmm. uh, you get that list and you can skip trace that list via PropStream or other places. And then you can go and you can start calling and texting those people by hand, or you can use um, a service like uh, Mojo Dial or smartphone that will help you automate some of the dialing and actually have you know multiple lines involved. Um, but that's how you do it. Essentially, you go get a list of people um, and you put them, you skip trace them, and you put them into the dialers. Otherwise, if you don't have the software or the funds to pay for the services to buy the lists and skip trace, as well as uh, the dialer, the simplest way is just to use your cell phone, right? Get on Zillow, get on Craigslist, find houses that are for sale by owner in the area that you're looking to do and you know buy or invest. Um, you can also find properties for rent. Those are always a great mic, the properties that are for rent. Uh, because you can call the landlords and say, hey, do you have interest in selling? I see that it's for rent, um, but I'm interested in buying some in the area. And you never know. Maybe they're a tired landlord. What are some other places where you can do this for free with your cell phone, essentially, Mike? Uh, Section 8, I know, is a good one, but that's similar to landlords. But go section8.com. Right. You can find – you're talking about finding leads finding for the leads. free. Absolutely. So uh, another way – and again, this isn't cold calling necessarily, but this would be kind of cold – uh, introducing yourself is Facebook. Yes. When you look up properties and you find uh, the owner, and then Facebook is an awesome skip trace service. Turns out most people are on there. Yeah, it turns out most people are on there. <laughs> Love that. I had to repeat it. Yeah. yeah, so Facebook's really good. Again, it's it's overlooked, but uh, yeah, very, very easy way to look people up. Uh, we've contacted people via another social networking, uh, LinkedIn. That works. We're able to find people on that one. Uh, so maybe a little bit older. Again, just depends on, on where that person falls. So, so there are great ways to let's, find people. Let's talk about the context of the cold call, right? Let's do so, cold calling. Yes, and driving for dollars is also a great way to get leads, but you still need to skip trace those, right? Sometimes you can use the app to do it or you can uh, do it elsewhere, but regardless, if, if you can't get their number off of Craigslist, Facebook, Zillow, so on and so forth, you're going to need to skip trace it. Then you can call with this phone, your own phone, or you can use a dialer. That doesn't really matter, but you're going to make that call. Mike, ring, ring, ring. Hello, this is Bill. What's up, Bill? How does this conversation go? Let's play it out. Let's do it. So you're cold Am calling I calling me. Or are you you're calling? calling me. All right. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. This is Bill. Hey, Bill. This is Mike. Uh, I was just uh, trying to get a hold of the owner of One Two Three Main Street. Is that you? Yeah, it is me. What What can I do for you, Mike? Well, Bill, I uh, I'm actually one of your neighbors down there, and I am looking to purchase another property. Uh, was wondering what was going on with that property. I drove by, and it looks like uh, you know maybe nobody's living there right now. What uh, What's going on, man? Oh, you're an investor, are you? Well, I'm a little bit of an investor, yeah. Okay, well, you know, I bought this house four years ago and uh, did a little work to it, and it's just kind of been vacant, sitting there. I had a partner, and he just kind of bailed out on me. This is a call we did today, guys. This is our <laughs> appointment this morning. And, you know, now I'm just kind of looking to sell it. You know, um, I had some people make me some offers around 40000 but I'm really looking for 45000 I've done a lot of work. Do you guys want to come see it? Absolutely. Okay, well, let's set up a time. Boom, and that's it. You just talk to these people. You make a friend. You tell them what your intent is. That's the very first thing. When somebody answers the phone and there's nothing there, they're going to want to hang up. So immediately introduce yourself. 
Tell them why you're calling. Hey, this is Mike. I own some properties in the area. I'm looking to buy more. Who is, who, who's, who's doing the dialing? Why you're calling them? Next, you move into, I, I think, I, know, I see or I notice that you own this particular property. Is that true? And if so, do you have interest in selling it? And that's it. And there's only about five, six things that can happen. Let's talk about our possibilities. They can say no. They can say yes. They can say, how did you get my name and number, right? What else can they say? I mean, there's only a couple possibilities. I'm pretty sure that's it. What else uh, What else do we hear frequently? Don't ever call me again. Maybe, F you. Maybe in a few months I'm interested in Maybe selling. later, mm -hmm. right? So there's a, lot, a couple different options, but there's only five or six different things that can happen, guys. And this is a numbers game when it comes to cold calling. This is a numbers game. Let's talk about the numbers. I mean, on average, you have to call how many to get, how many appointments to get leads all of the work done? A lot. I mean, that's just the bottom line. You have to call a lot of uh, individuals before so you doing, find a motivated seller. If you're doing one-offs, it's going to take you a lot longer than if you have a dialer that can help automate that. You know, we have dialers that do three and four lines out at once, and it helps leave voicemails as well. Um, but you're going to have to do several hundred calls before you find somebody that's interested in talking to you. You're probably going to have to talk to two or three people that are interested in talking to you before you can set an appointment. You may have to go on two or three appointments before you find a deal, maybe 10 if you're new, right? And you may have to have a couple properties under contract before you can sell them if you're new, right? So all of these things lead up. This is a giant funnel. It's a numbers game, but that's it. I would say, go ahead. It's a law of large numbers too. So you might get lucky. You might call one person, find the most motivated seller in your city and have a contract that day, but you probably won't. So most likely you're gonna call, again, 100 people, you're gonna have five to 10 that are motivated, you're gonna set three to four appointments, one of those is gonna to lead to a deal, and you make it through the closing table. Right. Again, so I mean, that's it's just gonna funnel down, it's like Dave was saying. Funnel down, right. So main points, right? When you're making these calls, call people that have presumed motivation. Either the house is for sale, it's for rent, um, it's vacant, it's absentee owned, it has high equity. These are things that you can find um, online and or purchase lists of, right? When you go to make the call, be intentional. Tell them who you are and why you're calling and what your intent is. It's gonna make it simpler and they're gonna enjoy having you on the other end of the phone versus just somebody that's stuttering, not knowing what to say. Just be intentional. You're gonna get told no a lot. When you're on the phone, just make a friend, talk to them and see if they have a problem. It's typically a property and see how you can solve it. And that's it. That's cold calling 101. One thing I would like to say. What yeah, did I miss? Is right? you want to uh, start with questions, but leave open-ended questions. Yes, that's a great point. So you want to lead them to talk and to open up. Uh, you want to agree a little bit. So like Dave was saying, you want to make a friend. Make you want to try friend. to agree with them. Yeah. Uh, and you also want to shut up and listen. So uh, there's a lot of people that like to talk, and there's a lot of people that are uh, more concise with their words. Uh, so again, you just want to shut up and listen. And sometimes some people are much slower so you're gonna have to let them finish their sentence and kind of wait a second. And it's I was a getting awkward. frustrated this morning because I took too much Adderall and this guy wouldn't just give me the opportunity to talk. So Dave loves talking. <laughs> Dave right. loves talking. But you gotta listen. It that's is, the and point. that's one of the things that I'm better at, which is just shutting up. That's right. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. So that's it guys, cold calling 101. Keep it simple, this isn't hard. The question that we got from our viewers and listeners, somebody sent in was, you know, what do you do on a cold call? That's it. It's how you find them. That's what you. That's what you, how you operate them, um, and that's what you say on the call. Uh, let us know if you have any additional questions. Comment on this video.